Hi, my name's Grant Whitehead and in this video I want to talk about how I'm using this Stream Deck the Stream Deck um, USB shortcut device I'm using for my TriCaster setup uh, and I love it, it works really well so let me explain first what's going on here. So input two is my Mac. Um, input five is an NDI input um, of just the Stream Deck application that's running on my Mac. Input four is the camera that's, that's uh, looking at the Stream Deck uh, and program. So simply I've, I've just pushed the preview and program off. See, just push that off over here so that we've just got these four big ones you can sort of see exactly what's going on. So I'll show you exactly how it works. If I hit PC, it changes to my PC input, input number one, hit Mac, it'll go off to input number two. Um, so I'm, I'm triggering off HTTP triggers. And so if we have a little look at the macros, Stream Deck, Mac input, no surprises here, it changes the preview uh, bus to input 2 and then does a main bus uh, auto. So that's simply the way that I do it. So maybe I'll show you exactly how I've set up those triggers to work. Um, so you have a look here at the application. Um, it's simply in the, the Stream Deck is, is sort of built for um, guys that are do that do gaming streaming. And so you can see that they've actually got a bunch of these sort of uh, built-in controls for different software like OBS Studio. Um, you, can, you can do some um, direct control. All I'm using is in Stream Deck, um, no, nope. <laughs> in System, they have a thing called website, simply drag that over and then uh, you can make a title and um, so if I was to um, let's, let's just make it downstream key one, you can move it around, you can put import custom um, icons and PNG files which is how I've done those other ones. So let's say it's that. And then you can see here, this is just in the documentation for uh, doing macros, triggering macros from HTTP. My TriCaster is called TriCaster, which is why um, no matter what the IP address that it gets, it's going to work using that DNS. Um, so I'm just going to copy that and I'm going to give it another name. This can be any name I want. I'm using SD just so I know that it's Stream Deck and then let's just call it Downstream Key 1. And then what we can do is access in background. So instead of opening a browser and hitting that address, it simply just opens it in the background. So now we've got a button there called Downstream Key 1. If we go to Macro, uh, we're just going to create a new macro. Is right there. I'm going to call it DSK1. Change now for the quarter. There it is sitting at the top. And now we'll record. Simply all that's going to be is an auto on of the downstream key. It's done. Let's have a look. So, yeah, you can see exactly what it's doing. Main downstream key auto. It just takes and there's no delay on it. That's exactly what I want. It's simply that. And so now I want to say trigger and you'll see, you can see my hand up there. I'm going to hit downstream key one. So there it is. If you pick that up across the network, stream deck downstream key one. And now let's change my holding and you can see that the downstream key is there. And if I hit downstream key one, turning my timer on and off, which just happens to be playing off the DDR1. So that's how I've set up these um, macros. So you can see 
These ones just across the top, I, I do lots of conferences uh, where I use the TriCaster just as a production switcher. So I can switch between Mac and PC and the Stream Deck controller is really great sitting on an operation table where I can just really have it sitting next to the laptop, in between the laptops. Um, it's just really convenient. Um, and so I can always have this holding slide, you know, some drama going on with a laptop, I can just hit the holding, it'll go to a nice title slide, a safety shot that I can cut to quickly. Um, one thing that's really cool and, and the first time that I used this with the TriCaster is where it was a larger event where we were using it as a production switcher for the main projector, but we were also doing a live camera switch uh, a live stream and record. Now what that meant is that I could sit at the interface and do a full switch um, for the record and live stream and then I had a separate operator who was just looking after the content that was going on the screens, essentially the PowerPoint content that was going on the screens. And so what's super cool about doing these network triggers um, is that first of all the person that was doing that could be far away. They're sitting on the network, they have a laptop and they have the Stream Deck software running on it and they have the Stream Deck. And then what I really love is that if I'm in, if I'm in a different window, so for example, I'm trying to pull up a, some content, the Stream Deck triggers, triggers, the network triggers are still working in the background. And so I set up this person with an ME output and they were using the ME as the projector output. And then they were firing off the changes that they wanted to make um, on that ME only. And while I'm sitting in other things or maybe even I'm trying to type something in, um, those triggers are still working. Whereas sometimes, as you know, if you're using the control surface or the keyboard, you can't sort of do that, that multitasking. Um, so using a network trigger actually creates a real multi-use, uh, yeah, multi-output switching device uh, and it just worked beautifully. So uh, you can, you, what you can do with these um, 15 buttons as well is you can create folders. So here's a folder. I simply just made this just in case I wanted to switch to something else. So I could just hit four, I could hit one, same thing. I'm using the, uh, the curtain transition just so it's really obvious when I'm doing a, a transition and you can see that it's, it's milliseconds as to the, the, to the response time. It's, yeah, it, it's not noticeable at all. When I'm triggering a network trigger, it's, it's very, very quick. And so that's a folder. I can go back to my main screen. And so I made folders for all the MEs as well. So then you can see, if we're looking at ME1, you can see that these will transition as well. And so that's an example of where you're just making a change to a, a mix effect um, and not affecting the program out. So you could use the folder for that. And so then I did two, three, and four, as you'd imagine. Um, the next thing is my timer. I have another video um, showing the timer system that I use at, at some of my conferences. Um, but I'll just put the holding slide there. But you can see I've just made this timer. So if we, I've got a little timer on, which is basically just downstream key on. And then I can say, you know, five minutes and then start. This is a timer that I've sort of built without seconds on it, just so that it shows uh, it's, it's sort of less um, disruptive um, or distracting on the screen. And so it's just a little, and this is literally just a, a video that I've made. Um, and these are all just um, jump, jump to the, to a direct frame. You see these macros, we go to timer, look at 15 minutes we'll see that it's just scrubbed to the time from the beginning and the amount of frames that it goes in. So it takes a little while to mess around and get all that right, but once it's done, then I can jump and turn off. 
set my time, you know, maybe set it to 25, and then turn it on, and then start. And so, um, so that works really nice. And the Stream Deck having the all 15 buttons, well, 14 buttons really available um, with a menu back um, is, is really cool. Um, so the other one I've made is, uh, I've just started playing around with this and that's, that's it's for instant replay. And so I do some, some sport, some basic sport as well. Um, and so I was just, you know how, you can see lots of videos on how instant replay works, but um, what I wanted to do is have just some shortcuts to, um, you can probably see, you can see when you go to input five, you can sort of see the names and I haven't, I haven't made pretty pictures for these, but basically I've got replay play and then I've got back frame minus one frame and then minus one second. And so if we look at the, the DDR again, so here it's playing back. If I hit, I've just hit play, that's a toggle. And so that's play toggle. There is actually macros for play and stop. And there's also one for toggle. And so I've put that in for toggle, which will just play and pause. And then I can go back a frame and I can just hit, keep hitting that. And then I can go back a second. And I've just sort of made it so that I could line up the shot. So here's an example. If I want my in point to come just after this shot clears, it goes back to play. There it is. Three, one or two back. There it is. And now I've made a set in. So that just sets the in point for that clip. Now I can keep playing. I could go a couple of seconds out and I've got another one called set out. And so that's set the out, out point. It's pretty quick, a few seconds. And that just makes that clip and then it stops. And depending on obviously how you set up your, your DDR bin, uh, you can make that play and um, play in playlist mode and put transitions in and do all sorts. But I wanted a quicker way of, of just doing a uh, do, doing some instant replay shortcuts. And one other one I've made is a reset in button so that, for example, if I go back, see I'm now at the set in point and I can't go any further back with shortcuts. I, can't, I could come down and grab and I can go to it and then I could and then I could set in, I could do that. But if I want, I have this button, I can just click and it'll reset automatically back to the start. Um, and then I can, I can sort of go one second you know, increments. I can skip through it, find where I want my in point, set it and away we go. So that's instant replay. And then I've just set a few buttons down here um, for the foldback monitor in a conference environment to basically change it from Mac to PC, PC to Mac, um, or a blank screen so that um, when they're standing at the lectern or the podium, they, um, I can choose what they're seeing on their screen. They can see presenter view or they can just see the timer or however else I choose to do it. That's the Stream Deck using it on TriCaster Mini, but it would work on all the TriCasters, particularly uh, with Advanced Edition. You can make that work, make those HTTP triggers work. Uh, and I find it to be a really inexpensive, cool way of doing some shortcuts, particularly because you can do those custom logos, uh, custom button designs, uh, which makes it really handy. So I highly recommend it. So if you end up buying a Stream Deck and do a similar implementation with the TriCaster, I'd love to hear about it. Let me know in the comments. Thanks everyone. Bye-bye.